Welcome back everyone, my name is Coxie and this is part 7 of our FPS tutorial series. Where we left off in the last tutorial, we just started to set up our zombie, so depending on the distance um, of the zombie to the player, he will either chase after the player or when he gets really close, he'll start to attack. So we're going to work on that a little bit more and tidy it up and um, we're also going to probably add damage to the player if we've got time for that as well so we'll just have a look um go into your enemy ai mine's still open so in here we've got our basically uh this is like the chase and uh this is the attack so to tidy this up because we're going to add more code generally you would um, break it up a bit and keep it separate so we could just say void chase player like that and then just take out this stuff here cut that control V um, as I said in the last tutorial either we probably don't need to use these but I'm just using that as a bit of a safety guard and I just wanted to show you guys that line of code because I found that really really handy with the um, nav mesh when I wanted to stop uh, my my enemy, sorry. So I'll just leave it there, even though it probably isn't needed. So void. Make this one attack player, and then we'll just take what's in the else statement, and we'll put that in there. Control V, and. So now we need to do is um, for this one we just need to say chase player and in this one we can say attack player. It just keeps it nice and neat in our update function so we don't clutter it up too much. And for the distance as well like you can make a, a separate variable if you want for this so you can change it in the um, actual inspector without having to come back in here. So um, you could just say um, that's chase distance if you want. You could you could just serialize the field if you don't want to make it public and just say um, float chase distance something like that, and just equal it to two by default. So yeah, and then in here we could just say chase distance like that. So that's a little bit nicer. So then if we go out in here, click on our zombie, and you'll see we have our chase distance on our enemy AI, and we can change that quite easily now. So we've got that, and what I did say in the last tutorial was um, I was going to show you how to make the zombie actually uh, rotate and look at the player when he's attacking him so that we can't sort of get on the side of him and he just attacks aimlessly um, that's not even in our direction so we can do that we can just add that um, we might just add it to the attack so I don't really care when he's actually um, trying to find the player if he's not exactly facing right on the player but when he attacks the player I definitely want him to be looking at the player so we can just do uh, vector3 um, and call this one direction and this will equal uh, the players dot position and then we'll minus um, this enemies transform dot position so that will give us a direction um, and then basically if you just leave it like this just say the player was lower than the enemy or the player you know was up higher than the enemy the enemy would be trying to look at the player once we've done the next part of code so he'll basically um, bend backwards to look up or you know lean forwards to look forward so we don't really want that because he'll be like you know trying to look at the player like that and trying to look at the player like that and um, yeah we don't want that so easiest way to fix that is just to say direction dot y equals zero and then we can say transform 
dot rotation. So the rotation of this um, enemy, this zombie, equals uh, what is it? Effect quaternion. Yeah, quaternion. Quaternion. Um, is it, yeah, quaternion dot slurp. And slurp just um, will slurp between two points as you see there. Um, interpolates between A and B by the T. So it's it's just going to make it um, it's going to make it nice and smooth basically. So we're going to slurp between um, well the this this uh, transform dot rotation. So this rotation of this um, enemy and also quaternion dot uh, look look rotation and then in the look rotation we'll add in our um, actual direction that we've already got and then we need some kind of um, speed so uh, we could just hard code in a speed that you want him to turn but I'll just try to keep it so you guys can you know actually customize it really easily for yourself so we'll just say uh, float turn turn speed and we can just equal that to say five I've actually got no idea so <laughs> we'll just see how that goes uh, turn speed so then we put turn speed in there and just times that by oops what's going on turn speed times uh, time dot delta time so that's a pretty long piece of code, but it's mainly because I'm so zoomed in, um, so you guys can see what's going on. Okay, so we've got that transform dot rotation equals quaternion dot slurp between our rotation and quaternion look rotation, and then we've passed in the direction there, um, and then we're going to make that by time five times time dot delta time. So that yeah, that should be okay. So we're going to do that when we attack the player. So basically, um, like we've stopped it from updating the position, I suppose we don't really need the nav mesh to update the rotation. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but we'll soon find out. We might just do this. Agent uh, dot, so update rotation equals false. I don't see why we'd need the nav mesh to handle the rotation if we're going to handle it. So we'll just see, and then we'll better make sure that we enable nav mesh to take over. When it's chasing again. Okay, so we'll just check it out. Wait for this to update. Come on. Okay. So if we get up to him now, yeah, you'll see that he turns and faces us all the time. And we can make him turn fast if you want, but he is a zombie, so, um, you know, it's up to you. But, yeah, that's a lot better. He's never going to stand there and just, you know, aimlessly hit where we aren't. So just to test that out, I might just make that 10 and we'll just have a look. I'll just apply these to the um, prefab. So, comes up and attacks, and then we move, and he attacks. Okay. Now, if we walk away again, then the nav mesh should just take over, and we should be all good. Okay. So, that is fine. How are we going for time? I think we're okay. Um... We might just quickly make it so that he can actually damage the player. So we're going to need a player health script of some description. And we'll just put this on our player. But first, what I'm going to do is just down here, I'm just going to quickly tidy this up a little bit and just call this animations. Because as we go along, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of things here in our project. So you like to keep this nice and neat audio in there, um, scripts 
in there, muzzle flash in uh, prefab, muzzle flash in prefab, thank you. Um, I can't remember why I added the canvas again. I think I've said that in another tutorial. Oh yeah, the crosshair, of course. All right. <laughs> uh, it's hard. I lose track. I get. I do so many different things um, in Unity, and then I lose track of what we're actually doing in here. So I'm trying to make sure that I keep up with what's going on. Um, so yeah, the player. We've tidied that up now. It's a bit nicer. Um, what do we got there? Effect examples. Asset store. Okay, so we've already made a folder for that. So yeah, the effect examples can go in there as well. And we can also put the um, zombie in there as well. That looks heaps better. I'll just save that. So on the player, we'll say player health. And then if we open that up, and we'll probably just need um, player health. We should do int or float. It probably it just depends, I suppose. We could we could get away with ints if we really wanted to. If we didn't, if we we're just going to take off whole numbers, but if we we're going to just um, you know, have it so that it took off like one and a half damage or, you know, 1.5, 1.8, 2.9 damage or something like that. We'll probably need um, floats. So we might just do floats just to be safe. Floats, um, they are a little bit more expensive than using ints, but it's it's pretty neg negligible. Like, when we're making a game like this, it's not going to really matter. We're not, we're not going to have to try to optimize our code very much. Um, yeah, so we can just say public float and say um, if I take off caps lock current health and then public float max health and we can just say that when the game starts we want our um, current health to equal the max health, which is going to need a value. So we'll say 100, so that's pretty standard. And then we just say current health equals max health. And the reason why we're doing both of them is just say you you die and you want the player to respawn. Um, obviously, when he respawns, you, you know, you want his health to be back at 100. So if you've you know, if your current health is down to zero and then you respawn and you don't have it like this, he'll respawn with zero health. So it's just a safety to make sure that when the game starts um, or when the, when the um, you know, player respawns, we can, we can use this variable, this max health, and just say that, you know, in our respawn script, we want the current health to equal the max health as well. So, yeah, that's why we do it like that. And... We can just do a, a um, public void, very, oh, just exactly the same as what we did for the the enemy, basically, and just call this one damage player. Uh, we need to pass in uh, the actual damage, so we can just say float um, damage. And we can say, um, current health, mental blank then, sorry, minus equals <clears throat> damage. So we're going to take away, whatever we make this damage, we're going to take that away from the um, player's current health. And we can just call this um, from a different script. So from the um, enemy AI script, if we want or from any script. So what we might do, because um, we're probably going to have to access this player health script um, quite a fair bit throughout the game, and you can just make it really easy for yourself. 
and you can just um, you can you can make an instance of this script or um, a singleton it's called and you can just do that really easily by just saying public static player health and then we'll just call it um, call it singleton oops and then in start you can just say uh, singleton equals this and now when we want to access this script we can just simply type in playerhealth.singleton and we'll be able to access anything that's public in this script from any other script so it's just a really um, handy way to do that um, so then when we attack player we just want to say player health why isn't it letting me Hmm. I don't know why I can't access. Let me just close this and go back into it because I think it's stuffing me around again. Excuse me.